The story of the Buddha takes many different forms, and you're supposed to believe whatever version helps you the most. Hmm. I'm already having... Guys, let's be judgmental. Let's be judgmental, okay? I already have an issue. We're not even started. This is the first statement. I already have a problem. You could believe whatever version helps you the most. Objective reality be damned. Nobody gives a crap about what the truth is. I just believe what you enjoy. That's or I already hate. I, I already hate it. I already hate it. I already hate it. Okay? Oh, so I was saying we love you too, Armin. Uh... <laughs> Marco, okay, this is not a god, but funny, funny joke. Okay, hold on. I've read many different accounts of the Buddha's life, and some portray him as a normal person, while in others, he's essentially Captain Planet. So I've condensed all of the different... So, interesting, because that's kind of like... Yeah, Jesus is more on the side of Captain Planet, but originally he was more like the original writings about him was more like just a normal human being so buddha seems to be able to be all of that at the same time depending on your version of buddha accounts together and left in all the important parts the future buddha was born painlessly from his mother's right side in modern day nepal painlessly from her mother's right side what the hell that's kind of frequent the future buddha what is the future buddha oh there were original buddhas and then there were like Past Buddhas and then eventual Buddha. Is this like a final reincarnation? Um, was born like, okay, was born painlessly uh, from his mother's right side in modern day Nepal. What the hell? How does this somebody come out from your right side? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Born painlessly from his. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Guru of saying just like a tumor, he was born. <laughs> yeah, and actually it looks like a tumor here too. This is creepy. This is like Halloween material. You should, oh yeah, this, you should, somebody should turn this into a costume. It could be Buddha's mom, and you could have a, like a tiny Buddha hanging from your right side. This should be a costume. This is weird. I didn't think Buddhism would this, was this creepy. This is creepy. Yeah mother's right side in modern day Nepal to King Shododana and Queen Maya the king okay so he's oh so Buddha is royalty so the mom is a queen and the father okay so here's my question when when he came out of the mom's right side were people like freaked out or like oh okay I guess this is how we're doing this or were people like like woman you're cursed or something like that or they just went along with it so there's the king Sodhodana and the queen Maya so they were the rulers, and the Buddha was their son. Yeah. Rulers of Kapalavastu. The king named him Siddhartha, which means he whose aim is accomplished. An old. Oh wow, that's not a. The name of a baby is like he whose aim is accomplished. <laughs> yeah, but it's a baby. What aims have accomplished? Like that's not a good name for a baby. You haven't even done anything yet. But apparently aims like be born. Whose aim is a <laughs> See, I like this channel's comedy. Yeah, be born, check mark. Aims aims co to do less complete. <laughs> that's, that's if yeah, aims accomplished if that's your your only aim in life. Accomplished. An old hermit named Asida came to visit the child. The apparently very trusting king and queen decided to let the apparently were very trusting okay, hold on. What happened? Okay. Hold on. An old hermit an old hermit named Asita came to visit the child. Okay. But named Asita came to visit the child. The apparently very trusting king and queen decided to let this random person hold their child. Asita claimed that yeah. this boy would become a great emperor. But if he ever... And they leave them? Okay, so this guy said that your baby, you have a special baby. It's going to be emperor. I mean, I guess parents love to hear that. Yeah. If she told my mom that your child, your son is going to become an emperor, my mom would probably be like, oh yeah, that's great, I'd like to believe that. If he ever left the confines of the palace, he would become the spiritual leader of the entire world. King Shodana, who had apparently gone to the Disney Villain School of Parenting, decided to imprison his son in the palace, never letting him... Wait, what? Why? So you told the, the king that if you let your kid go outside the palace... Shodana, who had apparently gone to the Disney... No, wait. 
Azita claimed that this child would become a great emperor, but if the boy ever left the... Azita claimed that this boy would become a great emperor. But if he ever left the confines of the palace, if he never left the confines of the palace, he would instead become a spiritual leader to the whole world. Oh, so the parents had to choose between a great emperor, 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 or the spiritual leader of the whole world. And the father was like, "Yeah, emperor sounds better." So if the kid goes outside. The palace, he will become the spiritual leader of the world. If he stays inside, it becomes emperor. And the dad was like, Who wants to be a spirit spiritual leader? Sounds lame. Spiritual leader of the whole world. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> yeah, the dad knows what's up. <laughs> I mean, I'm with the dad in this. He will become the spiritual leader of the entire world. King Shodana, who had apparently gone to the Disney Villain School of Parenting, decided to imprison his son in the palace, never letting him see any of the outside world. Oh wait, this is like a Lion King. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Oh, okay, so this is a Lion King reference. Never let, so he didn't, never left, never let Buddha go outside. Outside world. No signs of decay were permitted within his sight. Flower what? petals were swept away as soon as they fell, and sick and old staff were sent away. So, he, so basically he grew up not thinking nothing dies. Flowers, every, everything like that dying or sick or old, they will take it away from him. Siddhartha was unaware that pain, aging, or death existed. Oh my god, so he thought everything just stays the same forever. Flowers don't die, people don't get sick, and people don't get old. Aging or death existed. In order to make sure that his son would never leave, the king had Siddhartha married at 16 years old to Yashodara. Oh wow, wait, so what? In order to make sure his son would never leave, the king had... Oh, he had them married at 16 years old. Yeah, that does it. That's a good idea, actually. 16 years old to Yashodara. It was love at first... Yeah, if, the, if she's hot, I mean. It was love at first sight between them. Sight between the two. They had apparently loved each other in many previous lives and may even have made it while they were tigers at some point. <gasps> they had a son named Rahula, who was not a tiger, and they all lived happily ever after. Wait, I thought Buddha was a bunny in his past life. Was he a bunny and a... Tiger at the same time? Like, not at the same time, at different lifetimes? I'm pretty sure Buddha was a bunny in one of his lives. The king's pleasure palaces. <gasps> Wait, pleasure palaces? I like, the, I like the sound of that. What is this about? I'm, I'm becoming a fan of Buddhism. They all live happily ever after in the king's pleasure palaces. What goes on in these pleasure palaces? Happily ever after in the king's pleasure palaces. Until a musician, that musician's ruined came and sang of the wonders of the world. Siddhartha wanted to see this world. Oh my god, the musician. The musician came and said, Idiot king, like, this king is an idiot. He wants his son not to go outside, and you hire a musician that comes and sings about the outside world? You just ruin your own plan. And, like, the kid's like, okay, I, apparently there's a lot to see outside the palace, and I want to go see it. Convince his father that all future emperors can see the world they're going to one day rule, right? Right. Good question. What? That was it? That's all the convincing you needed? His entire plan is like... Wait, so you just now you're okay with him becoming a spiritual leader? So the, basically Buddha said, I want to go outside because I, how can I rule the, this empire, the, our kingdom, if I don't even get to see it? I need to experience it. And the dad is like, sure, whatever. Like, I've been trying to avoid exactly this my, your entire life, but your argument is convincing enough. Like, I got you. I've been like trying to hide everything, I got you a hot girlfriend, I've been like making sure you never go outside because this guy, dude, just random dude came at, at, and told us that if you go outside you're going to become a spiritual leader just because, uh, or instead of an emperor, I can never say that, and we, me and your mom just decided to believe that for some reason and we dedicated your entire life to make, we avoid exactly that. But yeah, your argument is, makes sense, so let's just forget all of that, and yeah, sure, you could go outside. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, the interesting, most understanding that ever. I mean, he seems to be easily convinced by everybody that speaks. He's, tr he's like Trump. He just, like, so <laughs> he just soaks up whatever, is in the, whatever people are saying in the room at the time. Cool, right? So the king, confident that he had tied his son down, decided that he could trust him to go outside and not start any global world religion. Yeah, what the hell? The guy said that if he goes outside, it will start a global religion. Um, and now, like, 
I think I could manage this. I I think I got this. I got this. He could go outside. I'm just going to, um, you know, my son is not going to start a religion, I think. If I could, I have control over this. I could do this. I could do this. Since when he was there. So at 29 years old, Siddhartha finally left the palace, but not before his dad had all of the ugly and or dead people taken from the streets. Okay, I don't understand. Because the guy that came and made the prediction, he didn't say that if Buddha will become a spiritual le world spiritual leader if he sees ugly stuff and dying stuff, okay? He said if he steps outside, he's, he's going to start a world religion, okay? So how come now all of a sudden the dad is changing the narrative by saying, like, yeah, you can... You, you, I think it's just the ugly stuff that is going to make you start a world religion. <laughs> I like how the dad is like really trying to like, we, we have to avoid starting a religion here, guys. <laughs> I, I like the dad <laughs> a little bit like, like, guys, we can't, like, I've seen what religion does. We, <laughs> we, we have to cut that. So, like, oh, I, I almost swore. We, yeah, we, we can't have any of that. <laughs> So I avoid like yeah. So, but for some reason, the dad has. Cha I think he just had changed the narrative from not going outside to like yeah, you can go outside. It's just the ugly stuff that's gonna make you like a spiritual leader. Siddhartha was having a grand old time visiting his kingdom till he came across a map. Oh look, he's like so touristy. Oh look, see, already the the plan was already ruined. Here's a sick man. Here's the, here's the real world, buddy. People get sick. He came across a man with bad cough. And with a bad cough. He asked his charioteer, Chandaka, what was wrong with the man. Chandaka explained that the man was sick and that eventually everyone... What the hell? The king didn't even explain to this tourist guy not to tell him that people get sick? He could be like, that's just how some people laugh. And that's, yeah, or something like that. He is sick. Everyone gets sick. Okay, why is this guy... Why is the guy that the king has hired to go show Buddha around has is not on the same page of the king like the king didn't tell him like yeah can you like make sure my son doesn't start a world religion by telling him that people get sick <laughs> uh, guys buddhism is like sounds awesome buddhism is like so rational right if buddha figures out that people get sick he's gonna start a world religion yeah this makes absolute sense <laughs> this is i love yeah but so, so rational guys uh, KG saying it is the fear of the most Indian parent that their kid might become a monk. Oh, become monk if they get too much into spirituality. Oh, okay. So the dad is like, <laughs> the dad is like a stereotypical Indian parent. <laughs> okay. Everyone gets sick. Chandaka had clearly not gotten the king's memo. This yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Like, yeah, this guy. <laughs> yeah, the, you, we, did you not, like, do you not know who you, who pays your bills? Like, what the hell? Patient blew Siddhartha's mind. Oh my god, he's like, what the hell? People get sick? His mind is blown. Mind. On the next two trips, Siddhartha saw an old man and then a dead man. <gasps> like, what the hell? This this is shocking. This is the worst holiday ever. <laughs> like, I didn't expect this. What's happening to me? Why do people die? Siddhartha became depressed, knowing that everyone he loved would have. Oh, he became emo! <laughs> oh, look at him. oh my god, he became emo. Buddha became emo. He grew old and died. And on his fourth visit, he came across a homeless traveler. This man had renounced all material things and was looking for a spiritual escape to life's suffering. Siddhartha, inspired by this random homeless person, decided he too had to go on a spiritual quest. He asked Chandaka. Why are you so. What? Why? And like, oh, the world is so sad, so let's just, like, give up on everything. Give up on everything good, because there's some suffering. Like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Quest. He asked Chandaka to take him far away. He then sent Chandaka home. Wait, what happened? Hold on. So, Sudatra inspired by this random homeless man. Yeah, this is, again, very rational. Just walking around, this random homeless man, like, yeah, I'm meditating. I'm just, like, giving up on worldly things. Like, yeah, that sounds good. I want some of that. So he got inspired by a random homeless man, decided he too needed to go on a spiritual, spiritual quest. He quest. To take him far Wait, away. the homeless man said something really quick before he left, and he wasn't paying attention. Look at the quotation. Quest. <gasps> hey, read my blog, spiritualityhomeless.com. <laughs> he missed that part. He asked Chandaka to take him far away. He made the, oh, this guy was named Chandaka, take him far away. Far away. He didn't send... Okay, say, so can you go tell my family I love them? He then sent 
Chandaka home to tell um, his wife and child that he was doing this because, okay, what are you doing? What's the explanation to your wife and children that you're going on a spiritual? This is a family's worst nightmare, isn't it? This is a fa every family's worst nightmare. Imagine like you're a family, you're like you're married to this man, you have a child, he's a prince, he like the future looks good, you have a safe family, he's making money, everything looks good, good, look good and he one day he sends message, I'm going on a spiritual journey, like, no! <laughs> I, thought that, I thought we had stability and everything was hunky-dory. Yeah, so, yeah, spiritual journey is like, yeah, it's like a huge nightmare for every family that has to deal with one of their loved ones going through that. <laughs> Wait, idea is fuzzy? Is the idea fuzzy? No, Deborah, don't tell me that. The connection is going to get bad? Is it fine right now? Don't tell me we're having connection problems. No, we're good. Hold on, let me see. Some people are saying something. Um, okay, hold on. Let's continue. And Chandaka home to tell Siddhartha's wife and child that he was doing this because he loved them. He needed to discover an escape to life suffering. And if he didn't, death was going to... Hey, that's such a cheap way out. I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah, sure. It seems like you're... Okay. He need to discover... An... No, no. Okay, so this is a contradiction. You don't lie to your family. Don't lie to your family. Okay, he said... So... That he was doing this because... He was doing this because he loved them. Oh, sure. 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 Such a cliche excuse. This Don't make this a bad... Don't make this about them. This is about you. You're, this is, nope, 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 nope. You're, you have insecurities, you have problems, you're having a mental bre breakdown, and you're trying to fix this. This is about you. You're trying to discover something. You're having an existential crisis, and you, this is not about your fun. You're being selfish, and you know it, and you're trying to figure something out. And you're like completely ignoring everybody else that cares for you. And like, I'm doing this because I love you. This is about you. Nope, nope, nope. Guys, if somebody goes on a spiritual journey in your family and they tell you that this is about them, they're lying out of their you know what. This is completely about them. It has nothing to do with you. Um, they're just trying to make it seem less selfish than it actually is. You needed to discover an escape to life suffering. Yeah, see, you contradicted yourself. So he said, first said this, I, I'm doing this because I love you. No, and then he said, You needed to discover. And then he needed to discover an escape to life suffering. So this is about you then. You just said it's because I love them, but now you're saying like, yeah, I'm suffering. I can't handle people getting sick. I can't handle people dying. He basically couldn't handle this, the truth about reality like the rest of us. We had to deal with life's reality, but he couldn't handle it because, because you, your dad raised you in a bubble and now you can't handle it. And because you can't handle it, you're, you're, you're having a crisis, you're going in a crisis mode. Uh, so this is about you, okay? So it has nothing to do with your family. and escape to life suffering and yeah. if he didn't death was gonna oh wait I, i'm missing the quotations can you go tell my family i love them okay so what's the next quotation um, because there's two things happening there's this captions but the but the things the ratings in the bubble speech bubble is different needed to discover an escape to life suffering and if he didn't if we are all going to die eventually anyways Okay, so why don't you go spend more? So why don't you spend more of it with your family, given that we have such a short time spending time with the people that we love, huh? You're going on the spiritual journey, wasting time instead of enjoying it and trying to do, you know, connect with the people that you love in your life. You, you know, you instead of doing that, you're going on this like dumb, dumb spiritual journey. Yeah, we will all gonna die, so you have to you better make. The best of every minute instead of like abandoning your family and going on a spiritual journey death was gonna part them all eventually anyway oh pff, yes great logic well is <laughs> why spend time with the people you love given that death is gonna put death is eventually gonna part you anyways pff, great logic it's not like it's the other way around it's not like it's the other way around given that we have such a short amount of time with each other maybe we should spend every goddamn second trying to figure out how to spend more time with the people we love because this is not going to last forever and like nope we're all going to be apart anyway so why not be apart right now yeah 
Great, great logic, Buddha. Fantastic logic. Which is a. Uh, that's. Oh my God! Look at this. Buddha was great, Armin. Don't mock him. I mock him. He seems ridiculous. He's an idiot. The bleak thought. Thanks, O oh Buddha. Yeah. See, even this guy. You see, you even the you even made the the this YouTuber of Kogito. You even made the press. Look at him. He's sad. Depressing people. Oh, look at this. This guy is butthurt. He's keep typing that. Okay, I'm gonna mock Buddha even more now. Moving on, after some wandering and studying, Siddhartha went to go live with the five ascetics in the woods. The ascetics practiced extreme deprivation in order to achieve enlightenment. Siddhartha began a six-year fast, sitting exposed to the elements and eating nothing but the seeds that fell in his lap. This effort turned out to be pointless, however. Siddhartha- Oh, great! At least that makes- Okay, I thought he was like becoming even more stupid, but... Wait, he took it- So he realized that- Okay, so he found out that this is pointless, so kudos to Buddha for that. But, but, what is this here? It took him six years to realize that? He did this for six years before he realized that this is, this is dumb as, I can't, I can't swear, God damn it, on YouTube. This is, it took him six, okay, Buddha is an idiot. I could have told you from the, Buddha, if you have spoken to me, I could have told you that this is pointless and you wouldn't have to waste six years of your life away from your loved ones to figure this out it really did he did this for six goddamn years is that hold on is that really true i mean obviously none of this is true but is this the true is this what they believe it's extreme deprivation in order to achieve enlightenment so that began a six-year fast sitting six year fast six years away from his family away from his child away from his wife that loves him to figure out that this is pointless Buddha wasn't very smart, was he? This is the this is your spiritual leader, <laughs> okay? Buddhas, B Buddhism. This is your spiritual leader. This this moron. Marco is saying to be fair, it took him like fifteen years to realize that Islam. Well, yeah, he never said anything about Islam. Wait, I don't know what Marco is referring to. Exposed to the elements, eating nothing but the seed. Marco always changes the topic. Hold on, what do you say? Exposed to the elements, eating nothing but the seeds that fell in his lap. This effort turned out to be pointless, however. Siddhartha realized that his mind was slow and clouded, probably on account of the starvation. This really. Oh, okay. Okay, Marco, see, he has an excuse. Oh, you're referring to me. Whatever. Um, Mark, uh, this he had an excuse. Okay, so the reason why it took him six years is because he wasn't eating, so he was dumb as a rock for six years because there was not enough um, ATP for his brain cells. Of the starvation. But no, that's a dumb excuse. This realization taught him that the true path lay between indulgence and deprivation. And hey guys, uh, yeah, yeah, m people, people. Not very genius people have already figured that out. So, yeah, guys, Buddha. Here's the thing: I would say for I would say that at least for Islam, you could say that Muhammad seemed to be like a genius, even though he was evil. He went from being a goat herder to all of a sudden becoming the king of all Arabs. So you could at least say that he was like a brilliant warlord and a great entrepreneur, as you know, as bad as his religion is, you can't say that Muhammad was an idiot. But Buddha seems to be an idiot. This is an idea he would later develop into the middle path. Oh, look at this. Doka is saying Buddhism is for serious people who think deep. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> it seems like for people who don't think at all. I mean, if your spiritual, if your spiritual leader took six years to realize that meditate being away from your family and giving up on all worldly affairs is like a dumb idea i don't think your religion is meant for people who think very deeply he gave up his fast by eating a bowl of rice milk his five ascetic friends left good good job but okay so he gave up his fast by eating a bowl of rice milk okay 
That's not a good idea. If you're on a fast, I've, I've done fasting. My, my, I managed to fast one time for five days. That's my max. So I went five days having nothing but water and salt for five days, okay? And that's not, a bowl of rice is not how you break your fast. That's going to be very, very bad for your digestive system. Your digestive system is like has nothing in it and you're just dropping solid foods in there. It's just going to be, it's going to be your, your body is going to, you know, that's not very good. So you have to, I think you should have like watermelon or something really soft, probably some broth, like a soup, maybe that's how you break your fast. You, you introduce some nutrition to your digestive system that you could handle that doesn't have to work very hard on maybe just some milk. Um, Actually, I, I think you should, I don't think your, your body could handle milk if you have, you, I don't know if you're going to have the enzymes to break milk if you haven't eaten milk, have any dairy for six years. So yeah, not a very good idea. It's milk. His five ascetic friends left in disgust, thinking that Siddhartha had given up on his quest. Oh my God, look at this. Please don't compare Muhammad with Buddha. Buddha was far better than any other religions. Nope, Buddha was dumber than Muhammad. Okay? Yeah, he was less violent than Muhammad, but Buddha was dumber than Muhammad. For sure. For sure. Based on what I'm saying, Buddha was definitely dumber than Muhammad. Siddhartha wandered until he eventually found the fig tree. He was determined to sit under this tree, meditating until he reached enlightenment. And after 49 days of intense meditating, he did just that. At 35 years of age, he had become the awakened one. Hmm. The Buddha. The tree he sat under became known as the Bodhi tree, and its direct descendant can still be seen today at Bodh Gaya in India. Hmm. Sure, I believe that. After some consideration, the Buddha decided that he would share his knowledge with the world. He found his five or six friends at Deer Park in Sarnath, and there he delivered his first teaching, or Dharma. Hey, wait, we forgot to read the bubbles. But, okay, so what was the first speech bubble when he saw these four friends? Okay. He found his five ascetic friends at Deer Park and started. Well, this is awkward. Oh, so these are the people who abandoned him when he broke his fast. We were like, you're not serious like us. We don't break our fast. So as soon as he break his fast, these people left him. And now he's back with to them. And like, oh my God, this is awkward. Okay. And there he delivered his first teaching or Dharma. Revealing for the first time. His He's like, guys, you guys, you guys don't know what you're doing. I have... I have figured, I have the way, I know the way. Okay, but I'm about to drop some serious knowledge. Okay, so what did he tell them? Revealing for the first time his four noble truths. God, this guy's, yeah, this guy is, one, how old was he here? Oh, 35 something? Yeah, this is probably the time in your life that you go through, you know, this period that you think like, you know, Muhammad was 40, so this guy, oh yeah, this is actually pretty close. This is the age for having existential crises and stuff like that. His four noble truths. Four noble truths. Yeah, and no, nothing ever is ever nothing about life is ever the simple. For you know, people when people give you lists that like this that is supposed to fix everything and explain everything, yeah, you like just you could you could bet a lot of money that it's going to be nonsense because nothing you cannot put life knife life, life is complicated okay you can't just summarize things like oh here's the four truths or here's the seven deadly sins or here are the six things that you need to avoid or here's the four things that you could do and that everything but no you have to judge everything independently based on evidence um and everything every scenario is going to be different from the next you have to use you know you have to analyze them independently there's no there's no simple trick you know cheat code to life to be able to like oh yeah if you just do f these four things or if you don't know know these 10 things or if you avoid these five things everything was going to be hunky dory the five ascetics became the first members of the sangha the buddhist monk community the buddha would wander the gangetic plain for the next 45 years gathering thousands of followers and accepting people of all genders class and castes into the Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to read the guys. Don't, I told you at the beginning. I'm trying to read. I try to read comments. I can't always be um, 
mindful of I have three screens in front of me. I have to watch this video. I have to read the captions. I have to read what Buddha is saying in his speech bubbles. And there's a live chat is happening here. There's a screen in front of me, there's a screen to my right and the screen to my left. And I have to also worry about whether my connection is going to cut out. So if I miss any of your comments, I do apologize. I'm trying my best here, okay? I'm, I'm trying. I promise I try. Here. Four sounds from one, like four directions. So four truths, not say. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not seven truths, by the way. Uh, oh, thank you, Deborah. Easy. Hold on. So, gathering thousands of followers and accepting people of all genders, class, and caste. Ah, oh, so here's a nice thing. So, it's like um, anti caste, some stuff is happening. Okay, okay, okay. So, that's good. Buddha is like anti caste. Passing caste into the singer. He died at 80 years of age near Kushinagar and his followers had him cremated and his remains spread throughout the Indian subcontinent on their monuments known as stupas. Which, oh my god, okay. Which continue to be important pilgrimage sites today. Buddhism would eventually spread out of the Ganges region, first down through Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia, then north over the Silk Road to Central and East Asia, and it would then spread from Tibet all the way to Mongolia where under the Mongol Empire it was brought to Russia, and then later on it would be exported further west.